set out to have this little dialogue with everyone. We solicited questions from Malaysians all over the world, including your beloved Penang. So we, sure. there, there were loads of questions from Penang, but we picked out the best two okay. we thought for you. I'll read it out so I don't get it wrong. You have announced a greater, a, a greener and cleaner Penang as a motto for your state. However, a number of your policies are threatening the hills and seas of Penang. First, your policy of converting hill land into residential development land, for, in, for example in Bukit Gambia, that benefits mainly the rich who can afford to build houses on hills. And you, you, you know, illegal land clearers are just given monetary fines instead of imprisonment. You have contributed to the increase in legal and Ill illegal hill land clearing. Twenty such each cases, you know, in the press, like Potak Hill and Bukit Laksamana, being two prominent examples. Yeah. Second, the granting of massive land reclamation rights to private developers have threatened the seabeds of Penang, important breeding grounds for fish and con contributing to food security. Furthermore, you have granted freehold instead of leasehold status to reclaimed land, which is not consistent with federal land laws. We also have um, people in the cult, in the heritage thing saying that you are building so much, you are being holden to the developers. You know, DAP is no more Democratic Action Party, it is the Developers Action Party. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what about sustainable and balanced development in Penang? Okay. Yes, your comments please. Wait. These are outright lies. <laughs> 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 and I will sue everyone, anyone who says that. I will sue them and I've sued them. Because these are outright lies. I challenge anyone to tell me when has the state government granted massive reclamation rights? Where? They would say Tanjung Pinang 2, the E, e and O. Okay. Yeah. Tanjung Pinang 2 is a contract that was signed by the previous Barisan National government. So Barisan National. <laughs> it was done before all time. You know how much they sold the reclaimed land in 1995? One ringgit per square feet. Even at that time, it was going at 50, 60 ringgit per square feet. That's why I say these are outright lies. You can attack me for anything. Never attack myself, Wabi Chow, for our integrity. Because this is something we we'll defend with our lives. We have nothing but our integrity. Anyone who dares to stand up? Not here, lah, for sure. <laughs> if Ibn says that we approve Tanjung Pinang reclamation, stand up and I'll sue them. No one dares to say so because this was approved by the previous government. And when they signed the contract, they signed the concession, you don't honour the contract. Come on now. We are in a British system. Rule of law. Sanctity of contract. You don't honour it. They will sue you. They will get hundreds of millions of ringgit in compensation. And you'll be bankrupt. If you say that you don't bother about that, then I think you're a wrong country. You should go to Timbuktu. <laughs> So, I think that is one. Number two, <coughs> reclamation rights, that's a lie. We have not approved massive reclamation rights. Number two, you talk about heritage. You know, I've got a Muslim here. We run the best heritage conservation in Malaysia. <laughs> Acknowledged even by UNESCO. You don't believe me? Go to Penang and see for yourself. What is used to be a sleepy hollow has been transformed. We impose all the necessary building codes. We don't fool around. Not only outside, but also inside. You know, in Malacca, you can drive a JCB right into the building as long as you maintain the facade. In Penang, you can't do so. You can't demolish everything inside. Outside, you cannot touch. Lah. But inside, you cannot touch. And if what is alleged against us is true, we still have retained our UNESCO World Heritage status. Way. Thirdly, you talk about what hill development. Okay, Gander, we continue to maintain the 76 meter limit. Anything above 250 feet 
you do not allow any high rise development unless it's your own land you want to build your own house two story uh, that's not a problem it's your own house no one disputes that but where have we granted development orders above 250 feet we have not done so and i say this is just a scandalous attack by our you know, NGO inclined or Barisan National supported NGOs and Barisan National itself against us. Penang is cleaner and greener. Go and see for yourself whether Penang is cleaner and greener compared to previously. Even in on the seas, it is cleaner and greener. We do not make any apologies for it. We stand by what we have achieved. Okay, but let's say the projects about the wind works, the tunnel, does that help to make Penang cleaner and greener? I think it increases cars in the area. It, it, makes, it makes it worse. Pollution in the... How many tunnels does Hong Kong have? How many tunnels does Hong Kong have? From the island to the mainland? From Hong Kong island to the Kowloon? Maybe about four. Okay. You only ask for one, cannot? <laughs> You cannot ask. You cannot ask for one. And then what we are doing is increasing links between the island and the mainland, so they can bring two halves closer. You increase connectivity. Yes, you bring more cars in. But at the same time, it's just not the tunnel alone. It's also about public transport. And we have got a public transport master plan, which we hope you will be able to combine rail, LRT, MRT. Uh, cable cars, taxis, roads to resolve our public transport rules. We believe in moving people, not moving vehicles. And when you talk about uh, allowing cars to come in to connect, you must allow them to come in and go out. That's why we, there's a need for a ring road. And at the same time, we want to increase uh, public transport usage. That's why we have the MRT RRT. These are plans that we have actually drawn up, which will take some time to complete. But at least we got a plan. You know, we know that we are having difficulties in getting endorsement as well as licenses from the federal government. But we feel that at least we got a plan to, as I said, break the log jam, break the bottleneck, so that we can resolve the crisis. Finally, you mentioned about us. Uh, only imposing what fines and not enough penalties. Again, we are being blamed for the wrongdoings of the federal government. In Malaysia, when you want to prosecute any party, the power lies within the Attorney General's office. The laws we shall use to penalize the offending party is a federal law. What can we do if the judge decides to impose a fine of 50,000? We can only ask the Attorney General to appeal. Well, unless you change the law, or you ask the Attorney General to uh, charge them under a, a more prohibitive se session, section, I think that's the most you can do. Unless we take over the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> then you find a solution. <laughs> The tourism numbers have gone up. We have got double-digit growth almost every year. If you look at terms of Penang International Airport, we are the busiest airport in terms of growth every year in Malaysia, except for KLIA 2 because it's a low-cost carrier terminal for budget airlines. They are number one. But after LCC, LCCT, after KLIA 2, Penang is the busiest airport in terms of passenger movements. Tourism, more people are coming. Investments, they continue to come in. And when you have that type of number and volume, definitely, traffic jams and soup. Now, what, what have we tried to do? We have actually uh, offered free bus rides. Penang offers free bus, free buses within the inner city areas. We, offer, we even offer free buses from the mainland across the first bridge to buy the bus. But please bear in mind, when you talk about public transport, power lies within the federal government. The federal government has promised three times to 
Build the MRT, MRT. They make promises only to be broken. Three times the Prime Minister said, just like the Sedition Act, three times. Never, gentlemen. So finally, we wrote to the federal government, okay, since you do not want to build it yourself, let us build it ourselves at our own cost. No reply. That's why we launched the Public Transport Master Plan. 27 billion ringgit Public Transport Master Plan. Where we got a project delivery partner, a private party, to secure the license and then from a land swap mechanism, we do the public transport. There is no alternative for public transport to solve our traffic woes. There is no alternative. And we are getting to it. Of course, the traffic jams continue to get worse and worse. Yes, but a solution is at hand. I don't know whether anyone here stays around Green Lane. Anyone stays around Green Lane? Any Penera stays around Green Lane? Do you know we have done the Udini roundabout? Go back and you see what we've done with the Udini roundabout. 7 million ringgit improve the flow. But again, as I said, even you though you improve the flow at the Udini roundabout, you only move it to the next bottleneck. The only solution, public transport. And that takes time. But again, understand the reasons why so many people are coming into Penang. They want to come to Penang. They want to see the new Penang. They want to see the beacon of hope for Malaysia that is Penang. What about the P-O-R-R, Penang Outer Ring Road? Can, can we answer that question later?